misunderstood aspects of RC when it comes to tech is gearing. So I'm going to go over some of the basics and talk about how gearing influences the performance of an RC truck. But I'm also going to give some more expert tips, so make sure you stick around and watch the whole video. This is Team Associated's T4 Stadium truck, which isn't really all that different than Team Associated's two-wheel drive short course truck, the SC10. What these trucks have is a rear transmission, because it's a rear wheel drive, and the transmission is what's called a three-gear design. Now those three gears are actually the internal gears. The gears you adjust when you want to change gearing and performance are two external gears. There's the large spur gear, which is part of the slipper and attaches to the top shaft, and then there's the smaller pinion gear, which attaches to the motor with a set screw. Now, the pinion gear, even though it's smaller, has a much bigger impact on performance. The spur gear also impacts performance, but to a lesser degree. Now, when you make gearing changes, this is what you need to keep in mind. If you go to a pinion gear that is a larger tooth count, your top speed will be faster, but your acceleration will be slower. You'll also cause more heat buildup in your components, like the battery, motor, and speed control. You'll also have less runtime. Now, just the opposite happens when you go to a smaller pinion. You'll get more runtime, less heat, and better acceleration, but your top speed will be lower. The spur gear works just the opposite. If you have a large spur gear and you go to a smaller spur gear, you'll actually be faster, have less runtime, and a little bit more heat. But again, remember the changes in the spur gear are a lot less noticeable. The only way to make sure your electric vehicle isn't overgeared is use a temp gun. After running your vehicle, you want to temp the motor and speed control and make sure they are running 160 degrees Fahrenheit or less. You'll also want to temp your LiPo pack. Now you want to do this right after running and also a few minutes after running because of the chemical processes going on inside the pack it can actually increase in temperature even after the vehicle has been turned off and returned to the pits. Now a LiPo pack you want to make sure it's running 130 degrees or less. There's a couple things people don't know about gearing. Often if a truck is spinning out and it's hard to handle most racers will think to go to a smaller pinion, thinking the truck needs to be slower. When pro racers will actually tell you they go to a larger pinion, what that does is it gets rid of some of the snap, the hard acceleration, and it makes it less likely to break the tires loose and spin out. So if they're having a hard time, the track conditions aren't right, and they're fighting traction, they go to a larger pinion, not a smaller pinion. Another thing racers do is when they're looking for more traction, they actually install larger spur gear and then change the pinion to maintain the gear ratio they found that works. The reason they go to a larger spur gear is they want to move that motor back. You'll see on my T4, the motor is all the way back against the rear protective cage. And the reason I do that is I needed as much rear traction as possible. So I actually increased the spur gear size, not for gearing, not for any speed improvements, but because I want to move the weight back and improve traction. 